Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Last week Sunday, I said, and I want to reiterate what I said. I said the church of our Lord Jesus Christ is in an exam. It's undergoing restructuring, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not. You don't need to believe the law of gravity, it, it exists. And you don't need to believe the law of aerodynamics, it exists. So the church of our Lord Jesus is undergoing exam, and God demands from the church, both high and mighty, though we're all one in the church, geos and members to take a step of faith. And whatever happens in this um, restructuring phase is going to determine what will happen in the next move of God, which is very close by. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought a change or it has brought a time and an event that has caused a change in the order of things. If you look at even nations are adjusting in their order of things. Now, there's a change in the order of God, and it's also causing a change in the order of men. And so that's why you have a lot of um, rules guiding events all over the place. A lot of things have changed. By the grace of God, when the pandemic goes and the COVID-19 is extinguished, things will return back to normal, but not normal as just as they used to be, normal in the sense that a lot of grading would have happened. Some would have been elevated. Some would have been eliminated. So a lot of things are happening right now. Now, I've said it a message, but this is more of an insight into the mind of God of what is currently going on. The COVID, if you look at the news now, um, if there's a 30 minutes news, you find that 20 minutes is talking about the coronavirus, and then 10 minutes talks about other issues happening in the world. So the coronavirus has dominated the spheres of all things. It's so bad that if you look at the medical sphere, the coronavirus has practically taken over that most hospitals are not even admitting people of other ailments. They are scared of treating even their own patients whom they have their own history. I know of people who are sick, who went to hospitals and they refused to admit them because they said they suspect maybe corona, they don't want coronavirus, go to isolation center and stop. So you could see that it has distracted the medical industry. It has so distracted them that they are actually, in as much as I want to pay my respect to them for the fight and their sacrifice for fighting this pandemic, it has so distracted them that they've practically almost lost care for the genuinely sick who are not of the pandemic. So it's brought a lot of things out of scheme and out of order, and it has caused a lot of chaos and disorder and a lot of distraction. So I tell people, this is not a good time to fall sick. Sometimes I drive in, I see a man crossing the road with car. I say, ah, this man doesn't know, this is not a time to be knocked down by the car. It's a very dangerous time. Why? The medical industry is distracted with what? The pandemic. Now, I want to bring it in the light of all industry. Many people are distracted with the pandemic. Why? Now, let me recall in Luke chapter 2, from verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, Augustus Caesar made a decree that all people should be taxed and numbered, and they should go to their different countries. Now, everybody in traveling was looking at the census. But in Bethlehem of Judah, one of the greatest events in the history of humanity was taking place. The Lord Jesus was being born in a manger. And of all the people of the earth, only shepherds, some shepherds in a field, were not just distracted by Caesar's decree. They saw that the king of kings was being born. Now, what would I say at that time? Everybody was distracted with the tax and with the census, which is what is going on right now. A lot of people are distracted by the pandemic. That doesn't mean 
we should ignore the pandemic as if it's not there. It is there, but our focus should not be on the pandemic. There are other things happening. Now, we said Joseph traveled then and they had Jesus. Now, right now, we have the pandemic. That is obvious. The one that is not obvious is judgment is being given out to the wicked. Meaning, it's not being carried out. You know, in a court of law, a man can be sentenced to death for murder. Now, that doesn't mean the sentence will be carried out immediately. He'll be remanded in prison until maybe the execution warrant is signed by the governor or the president, and then he'll be hung. That could take years. There's a judgment being given out now, which most people in the pandemic, where it's not favorable, can quickly appeal, but they're not even aware. Some have been sentenced, and they have a short window. Now, if that man is sentenced by, for example, a federal high court, he's given some time to appeal. If he's distracted and does not appeal, the warrant will be signed and he'll be hanged. Now, that's what's going on. Some have been sentenced, but because they are distracted by the pandemic, they are not following up on their appeal. And if they are not careful, by the time the pandemic is going out, they will be history. The order of God is changing. It's changing. And many people are not aware. And people are thinking, maybe when the churches are reopened, they think it will be business as before. Let me shock you, it's not going to be business as before. Many of them are coming in for one of the greatest shocks of their entire life. Because the order of God has changed. Now, in John chapter 4, the Jews did not know the order of God had changed. The Samaritans did not know the order of God had changed. In the conversation between Jesus and the woman at the well of Samaria, he told her, he said, the woman asked, where is God now? Is he in Jerusalem or is he in Samaria? Jesus said, no more. Before, it was in Jerusalem and Samaria, but now it has changed. It is now on the streets anywhere, so long as you're in the spirit and in truth, the order of God has changed. But they continue their sacrifices. So, some will resume the services not knowing the order of God has changed. Why? They're distracted by the pandemic. Also, there's a change in the political sector, the economic and the spiritual leadership all over the world. Many people are not aware the ruler sitting right now ruling that their authority has been taken away by God. It's like the time of Saul. While Saul sat on the throne, David was anointed to take over. But it took a while before David took over. Many people are not aware that even in the financial industry, some mighty gurus are facing their last phase of financial uh, money. They'll be moving into, I, I remember there's a politician in Nigeria here who once celebrated his first billion in a time when pounds was nine uh, naira, 80 cover to a pound. So if you have a billion naira, you have about naira and 80 million pounds sterling. He celebrated first billion. At one time, they made a champion specially from abroad with his name on it. You know, in the later times of his year, he couldn't even afford to put a generator in his house. He was using candle. It, well, he couldn't even cook. They were buying food on the streets for him. That's how it ended with a billion. Now, there are billionaires now who don't know that they will soon, if they're not careful, because the economic order of God has changed, they're not aware that in some years to come, they will beg people to feed. The order in economic has changed. The order in the political has changed. And the order in the spiritual has changed. Button has changed. While the pandemic is going on, the new political leaders are being anointed. The new economic leaders are being anointed. And the new spiritual leaders are being anointed. But the old order is still sitting in the temple and the Sanhedrin. They are still sitting over cases, not knowing. You know, when Jesus resurrected, all sacrifices ended. But after he resurrected, the Pharisees were still doing sacrifices in the temple. But they didn't know. 
that that order had come to an end, they were still doing sacrifices. Saul was still sitting on the throne. He didn't know, but well, he was aware that there's a new king anointed in his place. But then he was still the one on the throne. So by the time the pandemic is over, what you're going to see are the souls on the throne and the Davids preparing for a takeover. So there's a wealth transfer being taking place right now. Also, the kingdom of God is being given out. It has arrived. Jesus said the kingdom of God in Romans 14, 17 is not a meat and drink. So those who are concerned with meat and drink, even if God had the kingdom in mind for them, have been excused because it's not in meat and drink. Because the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. It's in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom has arrived. And it is being put on the shoulders of the sons of God who will bring Jesus with such a glory and anointing that it will be a combination of the first, the earlier, and this latter reign. All what Peter, Paul, James, John, what they did, it will be combined together in the doubled and more what they will do. They are coming in the double weight of the glory. And the kingdom is resting on their shoulders. But it's still available for whosoever can. It says the kingdom of God is, I'm not talking of church. The kingdom of God is a law. They will not say it is here. The kingdom of God is not a building. It's not a church. They don't enter the kingdom of God by confessing Jesus. You enter the church by confessing Jesus. In the book of James, it says we shall enter the kingdom of God through tribulation. When a time of tribulation, and so people are entering the kingdom, don't be left out. Don't be left out. Don't let food and drink make you miss the kingdom. It's not worth it. Amen. So while the pandemic and the coronavirus is distracting people, and they're sending messages to everybody, they don't have food, they don't have food, they can't eat, there's no food in the house. Some are conquering food and telling God, my tummy is not my God. And God is giving them the kingdom. While others are looking for food and God is giving them food. Ah, Charlie, may your portion not be food from God. May it be the kingdom. May God not descend from heaven to give you food. May he descend from heaven to give you his kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. And also, look at the things I listed taking place. Like the coronavirus is distracting people and they're not even aware. Also, exams are taking place. The church is undergoing exams that they may be promoted. And whoever fills this exam will have himself to blame. But whoever passes is made not just for now, for life. This exam is made for life. This exam is mad for life. If a person fails this exam, there's no opportunity again to redress it. And if the opportunity will come, it's not in this decade at all. Not now. Not in the next 25 years. No, not at all. So, if they make it, they are made for life. What is going to make someone made for life is not your certificate. It's passing this exam. And if they mar this exam, they are mad for life. They fail. They are mad for life. It's a make or mar. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. I want you to be more conscious without behaving like an ostrich that pretends as if there's no pandemic. There is a pandemic, but at the same time, like the Lord said in Luke 21, he said, when you see these things happening, there'll be wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, pestilences, and all sorts. He said, don't be distracted. He said, because your redeemer, your redemption is near. Your breakthrough is near. He says, Arise, shine, Isaiah 60, for your light is come, and the glory of God is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness is covering the earth. And he said, went further to say, gross darkness. Now, if you spend time 
looking at the gross darkness, you will not see that light. He said, but upon thee, in the midst of that darkness, he said, the glory, that's Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 2, the glory of God shall be seen. So in the midst of this darkness and this pandemic, Satan is tightening the challenge, making it worse. God is increasing the price money and he's saying the kingdom is just at your doorstep. Water it through, weather it through, and go through it successfully. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I said the, we're having exams, and in the course of having exams, we find out that it's a make or my exam, meaning some will succeed from this time in life, and some will not succeed from this time on in life. Wow, that is scary. Very, very scary. Oh, somebody may say, give us scripture. The Bible says that when Esau first had the opportunity about the blessing, which is sold for a porridge, and I don't know why food has ruined people in life. It was food that ruined Adam. Food that turned him from life to death. Porridge that took eternal blessing away from Esau to Jacob. Porridge, just porridge. A bowl, not an everlasting porridge that you'll be eating forever. Just a meal, and it was ruined for life. Wow. And if you check history, you find food destroying people. It was food King Belshazzar was eating. That he opened his mouth. He ate. There was so much food that he opened his mouth and said what ought not to say. And that night he was struck dead because of food. Praise God. The Bible says when Esau lost that blessing, when Jacob stole the Bible says he sought it earnestly with tears, but he never again forever got it. It marred him for life forever till today, till eternity. In the New Testament, in Hebrews, they call him a profane human being. The Bible says he tried, he couldn't get it, he could never get it again. So there are blessings, there are exams that if a man fails it, he cannot redress it again in his lifetime. And we have come to that time. So it's a sober time. It's a very serious time. Don't let any man of God be deceiving you, telling you that it's uh, all sorts you are hearing. They don't have the mind of God. They don't know what God is doing. They can have even miracles, but they don't have the mind of God. I'm telling you authoritatively the mind. What is inside the soul of the Almighty is what I'm bringing out to you. And I say it in the name of Jesus. Because I'm saying it in the name of Jesus because if it's not true, then I put myself into trouble. So I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, this is what is in the soul and in the mind of God. Amen. The question now is, how do I pass my exams? What is the most crucial factor that I need to consider to pass my exam? Because if it's an exam, I need to pass. If it's a make or ma, I need to pass like a final exam in a university. And there are courses, they say you can't do it more than um, two or three times. There's no kind of failing the third time. That person is not graduating. It's over. And that's like the kind of courses we're doing. So why do some pass the exams? And why do some fail? For anyone to fulfill his purpose in this life, apart from the basics of skills, focus, education, exposure, he must get help from the Almighty God. If God does not help him, he will never succeed in this life. That's why they said in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 11 that the race is not given to the swift. In a race, the swift shall win. Nor battle to the strong. In a battle, the strong should win. Nor break to the wise. A well-educated, well-endowed person should be able to earn a living. But it's not a guarantee. No favor to the wise. And it's not guarantee. It's about time and chance. Happen it to every man. 
God must help you. Now, in exams, some already have passed. Many have failed. Some have started. Some are yet to start. But because the time given is not up yet, and I told you, when the pandemic is up, the time is up. Those who have passed are those who God helped. And those who failed are those God did not help. So does that mean God helps some people and he doesn't help some people? No. The Bible says God is not a respecter of persons, but a respecter of principles. What does it mean? God doesn't select to help. He has his principles. And if you abide by them, it will help you. God wants to help everybody. The Bible says in Titus 2, 11, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. But the Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. So where did we get that faith from? The Bible says that faith is a gift from God. So why would God give a gift to a man to get saved and not give the gift to another to get saved? There are parameters. God is a respecter of prince. The Bible says it is God's will for all men to be saved. He wants all men to be saved. And that's why he sent Jesus, not to die for the Jews or for Africans, but to die for John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The son of God died for the sins of the world, not for a nation. Amen. Now, I want us to look at a few scriptures that tells you that it is the same open and the same um, opportunity for everyone. We are all people of equal opportunities in this life. You know, for example, when you look at the mercy of God, the mercy of God is available to everyone. God is merciful. But there's a place in scripture that says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Meaning, as much as the mercy of God is available for everyone, if you are a person, as a person, if you are not merciful to people, you will not receive the mercy of God. It's available to everyone, but there are conditions and there are parameters. God's help is available to everyone, but there are conditions and there are parameters. In Acts 10, verse 34, it says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, whether you're in the United States, you're in China, you're in North Korea, you're in Nigeria, is the same. In every nation, he that feareth God and walketh righteousness is accepted by him. Romans chapter 2, I'll read verse 11. Romans chapter 2, I'll read verse 11. He says, for there is no respect of persons with God. Again, I'll go to Ephesians chapter 6 and I'll read verse 9. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 9. I'm just trying to make you understand that I've had somebody say I'm God's favorite. There is no God's favorite. Nobody's anybody's, nobody's God's favorite. Nobody's a special breed of God. Nobody's special of God. No. And we're all of equal opportunities before the Almighty. In Ephesians 6, 9, and ye masters do the same things unto you, your servants for bearing threatening, knowing that your master also in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. I'm going to give you just one or two more scriptures. Colossians chapter 3. I'll read from verse 23 to 25. Colossians 3 says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the word of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that doeth the wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done, and there is no respect of persons. I'll leave it there. You can also go to Deuteronomy. That's in the Old Testament, chapter 1, verse 17. There's a man who was healed of blindness in the Bible, in John chapter 9, 
And um, the Pharisees were trying to ask him and wanted him to give a political answer in order to um, just make of no relevance the healing power of the miracle ministry of the Lord Jesus. And they asked him a question in John chapter 9. I read from verse 29. He said, we know that God spoke unto Moses. But as for this fellow, that's Jesus, we don't know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, Why is it that the marvelous things that you know from not whence he is? And yet he has opened my eyes because the man was blind. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man anywhere in the world be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him will God hear. So, God has his principles and parameters. Any man, anywhere, just be plain with him. Don't leave all those political intrigues. Be sincere. He will listen and he will hear. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.